Good evening. I'd like to call the regular scheduled select board meeting for Ber Town of Berlin um, for Monday the 21st, 2023 to order. With us tonight, to my left, is Flo Smith and Joe Staub. To my right, Tor Nelson. And I'm Brad Town. Um, additions or changes to the agenda? I think we can add under flood updates, uh, culverts. Culverts, okay. Um, public comment. Quick Mary. question. Sure. Um, the citizen appointment to the fire department board of directors is just, is that something that you're looking to appoint someone tonight? Yes. No, 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 no not, not tonight. tonight. I'm trying to get some. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. I was just curious. Trying to get some. Yeah, that's a letter. Any other public comment? Hearing none, none flood updates? Um, we are meeting with the Natural Resource Conservation Service, which is part of the USDA tomorrow. Uh, a couple potential projects uh, with their emergency watershed protection program, uh, potential grant funding, mainly working on the streams and stream banks. Um, meeting with the engineer tomorrow. Um, we've approached them with a couple ideas and they've been less than thrilled about them, but said they would come out and talk to us and see if we can work something out. I've also had a couple citizens approach with a few potential projects of which, you know, if, if deemed eligible for the EWP, we as the town would have to be the sponsor for and would have to work out a, uh, it's, it's a cost sharing just like any other federal government grant, work out a cost sharing with the, with the property owner. Um, Rob Allen, who is our chair of the Public Works Board, uh, used to be in charge of that program with the USDA, so he'll be joining us as well. Uh, we have our first meeting with FEMA on Wednesday. Uh, we'll start uh, getting what they're telling us what paperwork we're going to be needing, and the, the big meeting is going to be the week after. Uh, where they start sitting down with us and going over the damages and how we go about applying for funding for them and everything like that. Um, and then uh, Tim has uh, approached with the need for a couple of culverts. Uh, I think he said they were seven, seven foot was culverts. Uh, which looking to be, yeah, two seven-foot culverts, uh, which look to be around twenty-five thousand dollars a piece, for a total of fifty thousand dollars. So um, that amount would technically need to go out to bid on something that mm -hmm. something that big. So I was looking for how you want me to proceed. Is it, now is that due to flood damage? Right. And what are the two locations? Mm -hmm. uh, that I don't know. It's probably one location. A seven footer, 20 foot. Yeah. I'm going to say you're putting both of them together in one location. Okay. Be my guess. Yeah, but we're kind of getting to the end of being able to classify it as emergency work, yeah. you know, which we could use that uh, clause mm -hmm. in our purchasing policy. The deadline is September 12th-ish? Well, that's to apply for the FEMA funding, oh, but uh, and the work is going to continue on and right. on. But, um, you know, it's been six weeks now. It's not really an emergency. Mm -hmm. uh, to right. I do believe that um, FEMA has two classes. It's got emergency stuff and it has permanent infrastructure repairs. Um, and both are reimbursable, but um, it's like, like you said, based on the, how long it's been since the event. Right. Yeah. Well, they're going to look for us to follow our purchasing policy, which, you know, we say everything over $5,000 needs to go out for, for bids. Um, 
you know, there is an emergency exception in our purchasing policy, but it's kind of stretching it at this point to, to qualify for that. Well, the good thing is it won't take the call around to get a bid on it. So right. I don't see anything wrong with that. Having okay. bought the bid. Right. Uh, yeah. Can yes. I ask a question? Sure. Um, is this possibly in reference to a pain turn bike, or you said you don't No, it's know. not pain turn bike. I'm, I'm thinking it's, it's um, the culvert at the bottom of uh, Darling Room to change the angle that the water comes into the culvert at, because that mm -hmm. is apparently what plugged it. Mm -hmm. I'm not so sure. It was, I think it was that one you said. I'm thinking it's that one, too, based yeah. on recent work. Yeah. and. I mean, the, the only other one I can think of is there at the foot of um, on Junction Road, but I don't think that's a seven-footer. That's a big culvert. Mm -hmm. so I'm pretty sure it's the one on Darling Road at the bottom, because the way it is now, the water comes down and has to make a 90, and it's it, that's what caused that culvert to fail. It got up behind it and pushed through. Excuse, but, excuse me, Brad. Yeah. If, if um, Tim during his triage, uh, he, he said that this was an emergency repair, but it, it wasn't as dire as other things. Yeah. He, 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 if, it's, if, he's, if he said that, I could see that it would fall under your policy, right? We have yeah. a finite amount of labor and, and that to, to yeah. make repairs. I, I don't know if you necessarily have to go through the bid. If, if, he, if he recognized it as an emergency, now they're just, just getting to it. Yeah. Well, the only thing is, is that even if he goes out to bid, it's it's not even a, it's not even a week out. I mean, you know, it's just a, a per, basically you see what they'll sell the culvert for. The other thing with the one there on Junction Road, I think that one there he's, he's going to have to replace too because I think, I'm pretty sure he said the end collapsed on one mm -hmm. on the uh, on the downstream side. But he'll be in for that sometime. Uh, anything else on flood updates? Um, no. Okay, um, select board of the next two we can actually kind of combine. Um, <coughs> the last meeting we had the hearing on the uh, potential fire department merger. Uh, we are still accepting applications uh, for interested parties to serve on the committee for technically it's another week. We gave them three weeks, uh, so we have one week left. Um, so we're still looking for people interested in serving. We've had a few people um, express some interest and uh, just want to give everybody a chance to get their names and if they're interested. And on the same token, the expectations, start thinking about what questions you have um, you know, regarding a potential merger uh, that you know, would like to have the committee look at. I've got a big list going already and keep adding to it all the time. But, let them know what's going on. So that's really all I have on those two items. Any other comments on this? Okay. Um, South Vermont Solid Waste Management District. I'd like to uh, introduce Dan Casey, the uh, general manager. General manager of, of the uh, district, uh, th Throne Lay Sleeper. Uh, member of our planning commission and resident here in town and Matt Levin who is our citizen representative on the, on the district board. I'd like to welcome all three of you tonight. Thank you. Thanks. Um, I have a presentation that I'd like to uh, hook up if that's okay. Mm -hmm. I'll around. Um, so, are you just running it through Zoom? Yeah. Okay. Um, in case
I was hoping there'd be a cable. Oh, guess where? There is a cable down there. I don't know what it does. Um, yeah. So the speaker. Uh -huh. uh, no, it's a speaker. So you're and you're not town, not guest. It's the okay. actual town. You could do uh, You could do that with it. Screen. Yeah. Okay, ready to go? Ready to go. Well, I'm glad I printed this out because otherwise I'd be standing about a foot away from that screen. <laughs> so just by way of an introduction, yeah, I, again, I'm Dan Casey. I, um, I haven't been on the job very long. I was hired in April. Um, and um, a couple of weeks ago, I came in and met with uh, Tour and Tom. Uh, our ARC facility down in Barry was completely obliterated. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, that's where we collect additional recyclables, fluorescents, batteries, uh, paint, uh, electronics. And uh, so uh, the EPA is in the, in the process right now of cleaning that out for us. But uh, before that, just taking a step back, uh, we've been talking to Chip you about buying his property at 300 Granger to become our new headquarters. Um, and uh, the reason I popped up to talk to, um, to Tor and Tom was to see if there might be a possibility of actually uh, us renting that facility to, to run the ARC if we decide not to go back into North Main Street and Barry. Anyway, um, what came about from that was uh, their recommendation that I come to you guys and, and talk about our, our larger plans for the property, which we've really kept pretty close to our chest up to this point. So um, that's why we're here. And um, whether the ARC moves up here before we actually uh, purchase the property from CHIP, if we were able to buy the, buy the property from CHIP or not, uh, this, is a, what, this is probably a good time to get the word out about what we, what we have in mind. So uh, just a quick review of um, what Central Mass Solid Waste Man Management uh, does. Uh, we have an ambitious outreach program where we uh, provide education for schools, businesses, and individuals through events, workshops, our website, social media, 
um, but on the administrative end, we provide uh, licenses to haulers, and uh, we um, advocate in the legislature for with other uh, solid waste districts uh, for, on environmental matters. We, and we also run a grants program for um, schools, for towns, uh, and organizations as well. Um, our, our field programs, which are probably our higher visibility programs, are the ARC, which I mentioned. Just out of curiosity, how many of you folks have been to the ARC down in Barry? <laughs> it's a really great program and well loved and missed, especially at this, at this time. But uh, the other things we do, uh, the other field programs are our household has waste collections. And we also do emergency responses. Uh, and that was in full gear uh, with the flood. We actually had two pickup trucks, and all of our staff were going out through the debris piles in, in Montpelier and Barry and actually um, pulling hazardous waste materials out of there before um, Ceres and um, Ceres actually got to work uh, doing their thing. Uh, so um, we have a small staff, seven full time people. And we we do a lot. Um, so um, why are we looking to relocate up on the hill here in Berlin? Uh, we're we're hoping to establish what we're calling our eco depot uh, for several reasons. We want to consolidate our operations. As I said, you know, the arc has been in Barry. Our has waste collections are in five different towns throughout our district. And um, our in, uh, in our offices have been on Barry Street and, and Montpelier for years and years and years now. So um, we're hoping to bring everybody together. It's going to create a more efficient um, program for us. Uh, it's going to improve access for residents, businesses, schools, and municipalities, and it's going to respond to resident and business demands uh, year round with all of our programs. Okay, what's it going to do for the community? We're going to provide, again, convenient, accessible programs and services for Berlin residents and for residents from other district towns as well. Um, we're going to protect residents with emergent and emergency professionals, solid waste workers, and, and infrastructure. We're going to be able to offer trainings for emergency professionals on batteries and hazardous materials. And uh, we're thinking that we're also you know, a, a direct benefit to Berlin is we're going to be they bring people um, in from the outside, and while they're here, um, getting rid of their their recyclables and their has waste materials, they're going to be visiting other businesses in Berlin at the same time. At the same time. So um, one of the ways with that we're going to be able to do this is um, because the state has been largely in support of it. We got a decent sized grant uh, to start things off. Uh, if you look at the map up there, the red dots um, show where there are currently has waste co um, collection facilities. And that's what we're starting with because that was our priority here. Um, so um, we'll be talking about the other programs as well, but right, right now we're talking about has waste. So if you look at those dots, uh, our district is out is that teal colored uh, area that's outlined in black. Thanks, Matt. Mm -hmm. Right. So all of central Vermont, and if you look at the Northeast Kingdom up there as well, there, there's nothing in the way of has waste facilities. And the only way people have been able to get rid of these materials is through our collections uh, and by going to other areas where those uh, red dot, dots are. So uh, it's pretty, it's pretty glaring when you look at the map, and pretty obvious why the state sees sees that there's a need for this. Uh, Central Mile really isn't adequately served as as is. Um, next slide, please. So what do we do right now? We do um, we try to cover the district as well as we can by. Um, having these has waste collections. Um, we have two currently in Central Vermont, one in Barry in the spring and one in Montpelier, which is our latest one in early fall. And the others uh, are scattered through like Bradford, Tunbridge, and what's Hardwick. 
in Hardwick is, is our last one. Uh, what's the problem? You know, if, if people aren't available on the day that we have the collections, then, you know, they're traveling to get rid of these materials. Um, so attendance uh, varies dep depending on weather, uh, availability. Um, uh, right now, you know, um, we, we set up tents, we bring a contractor in, and that's economically not the, the best thing to do because, um, you know, no matter what, what the quantity is we collect, we have um, global industries from, from Burlington coming down and, and it's an expensive venture. And so, it's so expensive, actually, people don't really, don't realize that it's, they, it comes down to about $200 to $400 per car for us. So, one of the improvements we're going to see by locating um, Hasway service to, to Berlin. One, we'll improve access, we'll reduce wait times for some of the more, uh, for the more uh, busy events. You know, people can be waiting in line for a, a good amount of time. Uh, it'll allow for efficient use of supplies and shipments. It'll reduce costs from one day events. It'll increase safety. Um, and just, just to, for those of you who don't use our Hasway services, what we collect for these events is household cleaning products, used motor oil, gasoline and other fuels, spray and auto paints and solvents, pesticides and her herbicides, which is what we'd be looking at collecting um, on Granger Road. Um, let's move on to our ARC. Um, our ARC uh, collects other items like household paint, batteries, TVs, and computers. I touched on, upon this a little bit in the beginning. Mercury devices, electronics, smoke detectors, small metals, other landfill uh, band recyclables. Um, so from a time standpoint, we were really thinking that our phase one uh, would center on getting the property up to snuff and getting our HAZ waste facility uh, in operation. With the flood wiping out our arc, we've kind of decided that uh, it's probably a good idea to start talking about including the arc in our phase one plans as well. So, um, do we have are folks familiar with this property up on, on Granger Road? Previously, yeah. Previously, it was used as a, a, a meth clinic. Uh, before that, it was a restaurant and a truck stop. Uh, right now, uh, Chip is um, renting it out to a crane company and to Fecto Homes. They have they have a bunch of uh, prefabs located up there right now. Um, at this point, I'm going to turn the presentation over to Theron, who's been much more involved in the um, in the planning process uh, in, in in the logistics. And we've been we've been talking about this, and we've been eyeing Granger Road for for a while. Um, and uh, he can he can tell you a little bit about what we're what we're looking at for the uh, for the use and for the what we're going to do with the buildings up there. Okay. Thanks, Dan. So, um, so yeah, as you can see in these pictures, if you can see them, um, there's there's three existing built. Well, there's two existing buildings on the property. There's the um, office building, which we're planning on turning into our office, um, and then there's the garage building, and it has two bays split side by side. So we're thinking that we would put our household has waste facility in one half, and we'd put our Park, our additional recyclables collection center in the other half. Um, and that's about as, as, uh, as clear as it gets. We, um, I'll, I'll talk about some of the improvements we're considering for the property in the next slides. Um, so currently, uh, as you can see on this map, hopefully, um, you've got the existing office, you've got some parking areas, there's the garage with the two bays up on the, um, on the right side. And then there's a, a concrete pad and some storage trailers. What we are hoping to do is um, renovate the, the office and the garage, um, probably add some insulation, lighting, um, uh, probably sprinkle as well. Um, 
talking about improving the, uh, the parking spaces and adding a covered awning for customer intake so that people can be dry when they're mm -hmm. unloading their stuff. Um, future plans for the facility and, and for the property would be to eventually expand onto the existing garage, just um, build off to the uh, northeast and, um, and add to our programs and services and the, potentially the things that we accept uh, for recycling and continue to improve our service from there. Um, we're estimating currently about 200 to 300,000 in improvements uh, for the property and we hope that we can begin construction in summer of 2024. There's a lot of things in the air um, that we still have to get lined up, but that's, that's what we're hoping for. We'll also be adding a, a fence and a gate to, uh, to control access and uh, we're working with some architecture firms to um, to develop a landscape screening uh, for the property as well. Here's a, uh, a zoomed in, a somewhat zoomed in picture of, of the facility and what we're what we're looking at. The blue um, are new uh, things that we're proposing, and then the in white is the existing building. You can see there's two bays there. Um, we're proposing adding a, a blue, well, it's, it won't be blue, but uh, the covered intake <laughs> area uh, is the big square on the top. Uh, so our customers will be able to come in there. They'll be undercover. We'll take their stuff out, and they can, they can head off. And then um, the smaller blue rectangle on the top is a modular, um, pre-engineered, um, flammables containment building um, specifically for storing any things like motor oil or fuels that we that we accept. Uh, so those are those are our, our proposals for the or our thoughts for the um, improvements for the build for the buildings. Uh, here's a just a rundown of what the that what that modular building looks like. It looks very similar to a shipping container, um, but it is um, outfitted with a, a dry chemical suppression system. It's fire and explosion proof and um, it's about, it, it can take about 32 drums of material, um, which we would then ship out to be processed elsewhere. So, do you want to take, take over on the uh, process progress? Yeah, sure, sure. So where are we now? Are we developed the finan financing pl plan for the project. Uh, we have a purchase and sale agreement with, with CHIP. Uh, we've contracted with a civil engineering firm, Weston and Sampson, who have done work here in Berlin in the past. Uh, and they're going to check out what we need for permitting and hopefully acquire those permits. Uh, and what do we have left in front of us? Well, um, of high importance is, uh, is coming to a host town agreement with, with you folks. And uh, we'll be presenting a proposal for that pretty soon. We have something in place already. We just threw irony out the fire points. Uh, we'll conduct neighborhood outreach to see what everybody else in the locale um, thinks about thinks about us being there. We'll hold public meetings and we'll hold an open house from the facility as commissioned. And, as part of the um, at the outreach, we'll probably actually invite people onto the site to 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 talk about essentially what we talked about here tonight, but maybe in a little bit more detail and uh, let them see for themselves what we're what we're proposing. Um, you know, has waste. The term can be a scary one. This is well planned, well thought out, well planned out. We're going to have professionals who have been trained how to handle these materials. The way we look at it, the way the state looks at it is, you know, this stuff is a lot better off in our hands and in the hands of people who process it than it is in people's basements. Uh, and we saw that firsthand with the flood, the stuff that we were pulling out of piles. We had, there were some stops where we had fluorescence that were, and this is no exaggeration, piles of fluorescence that were like five feet high. People were just collecting them for years and years and years. And, stuff with mercury in it, and uh, this is the way to go. I mean, you, you saw the red dots on, on the map um, for what's happening in 
in other places in, in the state, and it's happening all, all over the country. And this is uh, keeping this stuff out of the uh, the waste stream is of supreme importance for everybody. Um, this location is, from our perspective, is an ideal one. It offers a buffer to the surrounding properties, a generous buffer. It, um, it's centrally located. Um, you know, we we're fully prepared to and talk to you folks about um, a pilot. You know, um, we haven't come up with a number yet. And, Tor scared, well, scared me a little bit with the uh, <laughs> the number he threw out a couple of weeks ago, uh, but we but we can we talk, can talk we can talk about that, and uh, you know we're really excited about it. It's uh, I think uh, I think and hope that we will be you know a real asset to the town of Berlin as as, to, as well as to the dis the rest of the, the the district towns in in general. It's um um so. We're hoping to work with you. We're hoping to be part of the community. And uh, one, one thing, Dan, that we have talked about, Dan, there, how often are things picked up? Would things be picked up from thanks, the Thanks, yeah. How long? Because yeah. people think, oh, it's just going to sit there. But actually, that's not the idea, is it? Yeah, it's not at all. You want to take this? Yeah, so the facility would be serviced at least twice a year. And that's, um, that's based on what we've heard from our colleagues. Um, in Wyndham County, who run um, another has waste depot with a similar population base, so so that's what we're that's what we're estimating is, is about two times a year we'll have it uh, cleaned out and more if necessary. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So I think on on your notes, you were talking about being open to the public. I think three days a week, something right. like that, yeah. instead of five days a year. Right. Um, and you're saying that you're only going to be servicing uh, twice a year, maybe, to haul material out potentially but it, again it depends on the volumes that we that we get in we'll we'll move things out as we need yeah. but um, one of the one of the, the big things about running a permanent facility is we can make much more efficient use of our supplies um, if you go to you know one of our has waste events we have to bring packaging for every item right and maybe it doesn't get all the way filled but we still have to pay for shipping and processing of those things but um, you know, here we can we can put say a bunch of spray cans in a drum until it's full, and then we ship it out. So there's really no added traffic, truck traffic, anyway. We uh, we don't anticipate a lot of added truck traffic. Um, currently, there's a, a crane company and a, and a mobile home um, uh, business running um, things out of there. So we anticipate more residential, you know, passenger vehicles. Um, and then a few the box trucks and tractor trailers per year. Mm -hmm. Is there going to be a specific design on the improvements? I mean, mm -hmm. uh, for containment, if a spill happens in the building? Yes. So, um, so that a lot of that is going to be put together um, by our, our contractors and by our um, civil engineering professionals that we've hired. We also have a, a Hazways facility expert that we've um, hired on to consult with us for this whole process. I think it's really important from the board's perspective. We've been having this conversation for quite a while. It is a mature conversation nationally. There are professionals who know how to do this. It's going to make it easier for us because we're going to be able to use design knowledge and expertise that has been working in other places for issues like this. We're not trying to figure out how to make a safe site. There are other safe sites that are operating, and we're going to use those plans and those that, that knowledge to make it work here. It's not to say we're going to just get a, make a cookie cutter, but there's a lot of knowledge out there that I think makes the rest of the board members comfortable that we have a lot of knowledge internally, and we can use knowledge from other folks to make sure that it's a safe, effective facility. And the safety stuff is going to be the, the main concern for people. And we're, we're able to, in greater detail, talk about that kind of stuff, the floor surfaces and storage containers that we're going to use. And use the last thing we want is for stuff to pile up. It's just not going to happen. It's, a, it's, it's, going to be, it's going to be done in the most responsible way uh, possible. That's the whole point of it, I yeah. mean, is, is having something that's, that's perfectly set up for it instead of these you know, one-day events 
all over through the hills and <laughs> right. Which have worked. Yes. But there's limitations. Not a deal. Any other questions for these folks? Well, I got Tom. So everybody knows I was in the waste industry for 30 years. So Berlin currently plays host to a, a major uh, solid waste recycling facility. Uh, it's on Route 302, it's the, the tire piles, right? It's regulated by the state of Mont. This will be regulated by the state of Mont. Uh, I don't think that the, the pile of tires benefit the town of Berlin. It's, it's, it's a hazard. Uh, we, we can't seem to get the regulators to, to uh, give us inspection reports. So I just caution this board that when they, when they uh, think about programs like this, that what it could morph to. And, and if, I would encourage that if, if you allow this to occur, that you prohibit other things like composting. I mean, I can see these folks wanting to get into composting, and right, there's 10 acres, what about, I don't know what it is, 10 acres. Uh, that's conceivable that that would be the next, that's, that's what these, that's what usually happens with these types of, uh, types of uh, entities. They're now looking for the next thing they could do. So there are some very sensitive receptors in that neighborhood, uh, three or four medical campuses that surround this property. We've encouraged them to go talk to those folks well in advance of uh, any of their plans. Um, uh, it, this use is not a permitted use, therefore it's a prohibited use. That they have, they have to come uh, to the development review board and um, and uh, make a there's a there's a provision in, in the Berlin zoning regulations that how to address the, a prohibited use. So it's. It's not uh, it's it's not a uh, a one meeting event. It's it'll take a process. It'll take a, a what's good about it. There's a good public involvement process, and so everybody then gets to know about it at the end of the day. And so, Tom, just um, there's a bit of a difference between us and uh, the guy who has a tire uh, recycling business. In in one as in one respect, where your employees are, we're, you know, we do. You're you're one of our member towns. So what you, what you have to say about our operations um, carries a lot more weight than, than a private guy down on the Barry Montpelier Road. Uh, second, um, I was on again. I'm new. Uh, you mentioned this this uh, this business to me last time we ran. I've done a little bit of research on it. And um, I'm prepared to go in there and have conversations with this guy. I scoped it out myself, and um, and it's on, it's on the list of things to. And I've talked to the state about it, and um, it's something that I fully prepared to to, to address. I think the town would, would welcome your involvement in that, Dan. Thanks. Okay. Any other comments on this? Yep. Joe. Well, I, right up till you said something, I was going to say it was a very unfair connection of the two. I, I think, you know, this here would benefit many communities, and I think uh, they, they would do it very respectfully. And um, that site down on the Barry Montpelier Road is an individual, and it's not benefiting anyone besides himself. But they are regulated by the same organization. Yeah. One thing on your site, and I don't know if it really makes much of a difference, I think, is there a right-of-way between um, Industrial Lane and Granger Road? And I think it was this right here. And how that might affect your layout. It, there is not. We actually, I actually, yeah. I walk my dogs up there all the time, and I actually, it looks like that goes straight down there, but that's actually owned by somebody somebody else you yeah. check it out our, okay. our yeah. plan for this and if you can see that up there it's a little small but we are planning to have one entrance uh, and that will be the same exit um, so folks will come in they'll go through the that covered intake area they'll loop around where all the trailers are currently and they'll exit the same way easier to control site access that way I also add that the, the district has done 
um, a lot of surveying of members, member towns, individuals, and this issue has come, that the need for a permanent household hazardous waste collection facility has come up time and again as a key priority for our communities. As a municipality, it's important that the district is responsive to the, to the customers. So um, while it's hard to know in 15 or 20 years what the demands of the customers will be, um, as Dan points out, this is a municipality, it is run by the towns, and that, I think, provides a degree of responsiveness and accountability so that should there be future discussions about other needs or other services, it's going to be a very public one, it's going to be one that involves the towns, and it will be structured in a way that will, I think, produce good outcomes. Just uh, a little factoid, 60% um, of the telephone calls that we get at the district are, are people who are wondering where they can bring their, their hazardous waste. Yeah, and it's unfortunate uh, only in the off season to have to tell them, well, you've got to drive all the way over to Chittenden County. <laughs> or hang on to it yeah. until, you know, summertime. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's the, big, that's the big one is we want to improve our, our service and, and be able to help people get rid of these things responsibly year-round um, when they when someone makes the gets the motivation yeah. to actually take care of, we all know it. we all have places in our house that we tuck things away when you finally get around to doing that chore and you want to take care of it that's the time when the district wants to be there to take advantage of that initiative and get that stuff out of the community out of the waste stream and in a safe location okay any other comments on this Matt, I just want to say for you and the board, um, Dan and Throne have been very helpful with the flood debris recovery right. at a time when their own facilities have been severely impacted and on conference calls so multiple times a week on them and uh, they've done a lot to get the debris picked up uh, around the area. The, the district is a real uh, positive presence in our community that a lot of times no one notices it, but. I think we're all very glad that they're there when we need them. We definitely notice, and thank you so yeah, much. Thanks. Okay. Anything else? Hearing nothing. Uh, thank you, folks, very much for coming in. Thanks for having us. The sample language in your packet. Okay. So, uh, the, <laughs> Rachel, you sit here. The, we came to the board here a meeting or two ago and discussed uh, the, our thoughts for a November 7th, 2023 uh, ballot initiative. You may recall that that's a first Tuesday in November traditional voting day, but there are no state or federal elections that day. Um, and so, uh, We've looked at five projects that would require financing, and to that end, that would require voter, voter approval. I'll just reiterate what those are. There are five articles. The first one is the Berlin Town Center Gateway Improvement. It's the roads, the sidewalks, the multi-use paths, um, the street lights, the, the streetscape for uh, the, what is now the, the Berlin Mall Road that once it gets redeveloped uh, to be trans and Town of Berlin standards, the Town of Berlin has agreed that they would take that over and uh, you folks have uh, wanted to name that Gateway Avenue. So uh, the current uh, price tag on that is $2.5 million, a little more than that. We have received an, an initial grant of um, $205,000 um, so that's this language will at the end of the day change or will add to it is what we think that the out-of-pocket expense would be to, to the town um, uh, and so we're still working on it we were hoping to have some resolution of some additional grants by now but the flood is flood has uh, sort of changed that a little bit the second one is a, is a public's work board, uh, um, and this is, you may or may not know that 
there was a failure on a, a, a sewer line on Hospital Hill. Rob Allen was here a couple meetings ago. Um, we have temporarily re repaired that. We need to do, uh, make a permanent repair. That's estimated at $2.2 million, and that will, that will be paid by the users of the, of the sewer system. That's where that would get paid from. The third article is, uh, as you know, the town 2015-2016 developed the first ever water system for, for the town. Um, uh, in hindsight being what it is, I think that we can point to, to that as really the springboard of a lot of the development that has occurred in the town since then. Water and wastewater are intricate to, to economic development. Um, so right now the, there's approximately a uh, 1.8 uh, 1 mile section of, of that water line which comes down airport road that there's no loop. So if there's a, if there's a break on that section, the entire customer base is without water. And so with this uh, Article 3, the, the Public Work Board wants to put a redundant line down uh, Scott Hill Road connecting to Comstock Road, completing that loop. Um, and that's $3.7 million. We have requested two uh, grants, uh, one for half of 3.7 and another for an, a, an additional million dollars. Um, we are supposed to hear on the first one by the end of August, which is, it, which is looming. Um, uh, we feel pretty confident we're going to get some funding on that. But again, the, this is paid for by the folks who use the water system. Uh, the, the Article 4 is um, initiated by the Recreation Commission. Uh, they have developed a cross Berlin trail. Um, and one of the key components of that trail is a, is a multi-use path on Scott Hill Road. So when they saw that that, that road may be torn up to put in a water line, it may make sense that when that road is being put back, we add uh, additional um, multi-use path. Um, so they're looking at $2 million <clears throat> for um, that cost is $1.6 million. That would be from the, the general revenues of the, of, the, of the town of Berlin, from the tax base. Uh, we're, we have applied for an $800,000 grant. We're supposed to hear from about that at the end of August as well. Um, and the last one there is uh, another uh, initiative by the Recreational uh, Commission. They have uh, this, this ice rink out here, which is a, is, which is a, a single season use. They would like to put a canopy over that ice rink, put solar panels on top, um, uh, reconfigure the base to, uh, in addition to ice in the wintertime, allow it for uh, other uh, spring and summer and fall activities. Examples would be uh, tennis, pickleball, or basketball courts there. Um, and so that cost is $775,000. Uh, we have applied for a half grant, 350, 350 some thousand dollars. We're supposed to hear by the end of August if, if that has come to fruition. Um, so this is the, 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 the first blush for the select board uh, to, to advertise this and start seeking some comment. Um, the actual date uh, for when they have to make the final decision uh, so September 18th. September 18th. So it's, a, it's about a month process. Um, we, we're going to uh, find out about these grants. Um, we'll, we'll make any changes to these to these uh, articles, uh, depending on the funding that we get. Uh, come back to the to the board um, and uh, make recommendations to, to you on on moving forward. But those are the, that's the, 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 tr the draft. Rachel has, uh, you know, we've met with our bond council. He's reviewed um, the most of, I think all of the, uh, all of the, the, there's like five or six different documents that has to be done. He's reviewed them all. Rachel has those and we will share those in, uh, with you folks as well. Um, uh, but you'll be hearing more of this in the future. We're, we're now starting a, a, a 
media campaign to um, uh, take some some um, photo, not photos. Well, I, what's the word I want here? Uh, video, video of folks uh, talking about the projects. We have members of the Public Work Board talking about the Public Work Board. Folks, Rec Recreation Commission talking about the Rec folks. Planning Commission talking about the gateway improvements, and uh, we're going to be putting that into a package. And, and we'll, we'll share that with the select board as we go. Chelsea from the town clerk's office is the task as the as the lead on that project, and so she's coordinating the uh, the efforts. She's uh, developing a landing page on our on our uh, uh, town website where folks could, could be able to go in and take a look at it. You'll be able to go in as as we get updates, Rachel's going to send out updates to everybody. Say, go, you know, take a look at this. This is what's what's out there. Um, um, so this this process is going along. We uh, again September 18th is a is a critical date. That's the date uh, Rachel has to have to meet all the regulatory requirements for November 7th. Uh, so we've got a month of work to do. That's all I have, Mr. Chair. Okay, there you go. Um, any questions for Tom? So of, of these articles, the, the, everything dealing with water and sewer really are important. They're all important. Yeah. yeah. No, the, but I mean. Yeah. The, <laughs> the more important. Yeah, the, the most important one is that sewer line repair. Yeah. Right? That's, yeah, that is the most important one. And that's the one that's paid for by the users anyway. That's mm -hmm. correct. Mm -hmm. you know, which we are a user, the town's a user, so yeah. Thank you for the thorough explanation and all the tremendous work you do. On oh, the we haven't got some money yet. Well, <laughs> well <laughs> right, we want to get some money. <laughs> it's inevitable. Well, I like your attitude. Oh, wait. <laughs> uh, okay. any, uh, any other questions for Tom? Thank you very much, Tom. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Um, water ordinance construction standards revision. So the um, in front of you, it looks like this. The Public Work Board um, has met and would like to make some uh, uh, change to the water ordinance. And uh, particularly around, around um, defining fire protection capacity, and the, the, they would like to define that as uh, fire protection capacity, the ability of a public water system in mitigating the unwanted effects of potentially destructive fires. We want to add that to our um, to our list of definitions, and then which would lead to uh, uh, two, two additional paragraphs, uh, the newest, new section uh, 20, and you'll see it, it's A and B there. The, the, I'll, this A basically says, right, I'll, go in a, in the, in the, I'll go back a little bit. When, when the water system was put in place, um, uh, the select board said that as the water was going in, if you had an existing home, you were you were not required to 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 connect, um, and that's how the public work board has, has been operating. Um, what uh, section A says is that any new homes that are constructed today, not existing homes, any new homes, uh, businesses, industries, any any buildings that have human occupancy. Would be required to connect to uh, to the water system for potable water, restrooms, and, and that. And we said within 200 feet of of the water main, which we thought was a reasonable distance off. That if someone had a large tract of land and they were thousands of feet off of that, it, it didn't make sense for them to run a, a, a lateral that far. Um, so that's that's a. Uh, B um, basically says that all non-human habitable structures, like 
Uh, and we, we've seen a proliferation of mini storage units. We're seeing a prolif proliferation of solar farms, um, just to name two, that don't have human occupancy, that that uh, need fire protection, and and um, who, how fire fire protection is paid for today is 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 it's the users of of the of the system. Um, and so the, t the town doesn't contribute uh, outside of being connected at this property. The town doesn't uh, earmark funds to the, to the, water, uh, to the water system. Um, and so the Public Work Board wants to be able to, to uh, charge those non-human uh, uh, occupancy structures uh, uh, fire protection. Because they'll burn if they need fire, if they're fire. If they, look, they expect a fire company to show up. If there's a fire hydrant at the end of their end of their lot, they're going to hook to the to, to that fire hydrant to put out the put out those fires. And so that's what B is. It's it's saying th those commercial structures that aren't used for human occupancy uh, have to uh, purchase a fire protection capacity. And you may recall that uh, the, our, the Public Work Board water billing is, 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 is two pieces. One of them is, is the debt service. You know, we've taken out a um, six and a half million dollar loan uh, to pay for the water system. And the other is use. And so the thought process was that, that folks that fall under, under B would be, uh, uh, be Subject to the debt service piece of it, not not the use. And so, this um, we have a date of October second for a, if you all agree. But there's with a this. listing of the key dates in your packet. I've combined both the bond vote and the water ordinance onto one document. Kind of watch for order, hopefully. Um, but October 2nd would be a public hearing and adoption of the water ordinance uh, to get um, one in the next uh, uh, in the minutes and posting. Um, then uh, the appeal period ends on November 17th, and if nothing changes, uh, December 3rd is when the effective date of the ordinance would be. So again, if, if, if you all are, uh, uh, think this is a, a, a good way for the Public Work Board to uh, proceed, I'd, I'd ask you to okay this language, which would then set the stage for that public hearing where we take public comment on it. Make the motion to approve the water ordinance and construction standard revision as presented to us this evening. There a second. A second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Aye. I abstain. Thank you. Motion to carry. I just want to say Rachel's office has been really great on all these things. I mean, she's she's carrying the ball on a lot of it, so kudos to yep. Rachel and Chelsea. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Thank you, you Tom. Okay, adopt a resolution to create a local cannabis control commission. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you. So the town voted to allow uh, retail sales of marijuana in the town. Uh, that was a binding vote uh, by the town. Um, there is now one retail establishment open. Uh, there is also a few growers who are ex expressing interest. Um, at the time, and you know, it's a still possible now, we could uh, implement a local cannabis 
control commission on included in your packet and as in last week's the uh, guidance from the state cannabis control board um, on municipalities uh, it's another step that we as a town can take uh, to protect our interests in the town um, zoning regulations do apply for uh, marijuana retail establishments however we cannot create zoning rules just for marijuana um, establishments it's, it's our regular townwide uh, zoning restrictions um, there's about maybe two dozen towns in the state that have implemented these local commissions Barry City and Barry Town uh, being two of the closest um, Burnton Cambridge Derby Hardwick Essex Junction Johnson Milton Randolph Rutland Springfield Stowe Winooski Woodstock or some of the other ones um, it gives us a voice, you know, in the state uh, issuing the licenses, because um, otherwise, you know, we were basically left out of the loop when this last one uh, moved into town. So I would recommend uh, you all have the draft of the resolution in your packet. Uh, this is the straight language out of the uh, state guidance. Um, I would recommend that we adopt. Uh, a local cannabis control commission and that would be made up of the members of the select board okay chief do you have anything else you wanted to add or no also that i would recommend uh, us establishing the board so we don't get blindsided mm -hmm. you want to hear a motion on this I move that we adopt the resolution to adopt that software and a town cannabis control commission as presented. And I second that motion. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, Police Department server proposal and acceptance, Chief? Yes. Um, tech field is not exactly my area of expertise but um, as you may or may not be aware we recently had some upgrades to our systems at the PD uh, they were outdated uh, and in dire need of replacement what happened when RV Tech came in is that they saw that we were woefully um, in need of an update everything was pretty much being kept together with duct tape and chewing gum um, in order to access state and federal data systems, we need to comply with certain standards, and we were really not in compliance with a lot of those standards. Uh, so we were lucky that there wasn't a, a major issue. Uh, we're in much better shape now. Uh, we'd be in much better shape if we established our own servers um, and had a centrally located place to store our data. And that's what this proposal presents. It's costly, uh, but I think it's needed. Uh, these things were neglected for a number of years, unfortunately. Uh, this is the cost of kind of getting up to date and being in a better place. It establishes some redundancy as well for us in case there is some kind of issue. If approved, what's their timeline for implementing? Um, I don't know. I don't know what it took RV Tech a lot longer than they anticipated to update our systems just because of the amount of problems they ran into. Uh, I think they have a better understanding of what they're up against now. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some prerequisites that they have uh, in place that is a requirement on us. Probably the most problematic one is to find an area on our side of the house. Um, that can regulate the temperature. Mm -hmm. uh, they may need to assist us in some way. If that's the case, it's probably going to be an additional amount of money. Mm -hmm. That's always a huge yeah. undertaking. 
How much do you have in your budget that you would allocate we, to it? We have a budget for this. So. No, no, not at all. I think when you first yeah, started we, talking about this, you're looking at ARPA money. Yeah, we were, and I, you know, I couldn't find anything in the minutes to support that. However, in you know keeping this ARPA thing together, um, Vince and I have thought about having fifty thousand set aside for that, which is more than enough for this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I just couldn't find any minutes to support that. However, I do have them. Mm -hmm, I already mm -hmm. put it into the ARPA. That's excellent. And how much is left? In ARPA? Uh, after all of these things, if the, you know, if we include this fifty thousand, we still have about ninety-seven thousand. And that has to be allocated in another year. That was like twenty twenty-five, but I'm mm -hmm. not. I'm not certain. I want to say that when next year mm -hmm. obligated and then, and then spent in twenty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you expect it would be well below 50000 from your based perspective and based on what we're looking at here? As long as the don't run into a lot of trouble with the, with the building itself. Right, right, right. And the temperature controlling, right. et cetera. I, I would expect really the only available room we have is in our evidence room. That's a secure location, ideal for the servers. Um, and the temperature stays fairly regulated in there. Mm -hmm. It probably runs on the warmer side. Especially once you start throwing some electronics in there, Absolutely. it's going to increase. But if we put some kind of mitigation system in there, I imagine it will be a one time cost. Or a but do you want all the text and stuff to have access to that room? Uh, it's okay as long as they're in our presence. That exists there. But no, <laughs> not free reign. How large is your, your room? The evidence room is probably half this size of this conference room. And yeah, one question I have is I noticed on here that there's a quantity of 28 for the workstation migrations. $2,800? No, 28 in terms of a quantity. Under services and third line down, service TNM phase three workstation migration service or project labor build at actual work rate. It's $130.50, but times 28 quantity. I wonder if that's a typo. It must be a typo. Uh, that would uh, decrease the amount significantly. Uh, well, providing that that quantity it, number is not a typo, exactly. the price is still carried over. Well, the price is, or, or is hourly rate. You know, money rate was 28 hours. It could be. It should make sense. Mm -hmm. if, it, if it's ours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would expect yeah, that a lot of it's ours. 350 shows up on all three of them. I mean, uh, $130.50 shows up on all three of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that must be his hourly rate. Yeah. It must be. Is the evidence room that elf has an outside wall? No. Uh, any other discussion on this? Motion. I move to proceed with the police department server proposal from RB Tech. I make a second on that. Any other discussion on this? I do. I just want to make sure that it's clear that the money is going to come out of ARPA and then the units. Yeah, correct. Mm -hmm. yeah, ARPA. Definitely. Thank you very much, Steve. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Um, I Approved drug and alcohol policy for CMV operators. Policy uh, this is an update of our existing policy. Um, gave you a draft of it at the last meeting. Uh, 
This is a document that's required under federal regulations, and there was an update required back in 2000 that we did not implement. Um, it is under page seven, uh, titled FMCSA Clearinghouse. These are required checks for, required to do every uh, for every new CDL hire and once a year. Uh, checking for uh, previously uh, testing violations. Um, so this rectifies that uh, mission our policy. No other major changes, just a few updates to uh, names and things like that. Um, so I recommend adoption of this policy as presented, and I'll make that motion. Here, I'll second. second. I'll second. Any further discussion? Question. So. Section five, random testing, and they start talking the second paragraph, and they're talking about the, the minimum percentage of pools dri uh, drivers selected for drug testing. And this is gonna be done quarterly. How many CDL drivers do we really have? I would base it on five. Okay. Our four road crew and um, credit. And the minimum would be well, at least one? Well, it's a quarter, so we good. are no, because we are. You could you can pool. Okay. Um, you join what's called a consortium, Correct. which is which we're part of through the Vermont leagues of cities and towns. So this pool um, has to test at the required percent, which I think is fifty and ten, fifty percent of uh, drivers for drugs and ten for alcohol, um, and that percentage changes every year, but I mean, it could change every year, most likely it, it doesn't, I mean, it's the same from year to year, so pool-wide, you have to conduct those many tests, not us as a town have to okay. conduct that many tests. Right. Any other questions? Any other comments? How big is the pool? <laughs> Just curious. <laughs> That I don't know offhand. I mean, it's quite it's quite a few of the cities and towns in, in the state. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Um, citizen appointment to the fire department board of directors. So. About 10 years ago, would you say, Joe, the Fire Department Corporation expanded their um, board of directors and gave the select board uh, the opportunity to make two appointments to the board. Uh, the thinking was that one of the members would be a select board member, uh, which Flo is serving in that. Capacity. The, the other could be a select board member or it could be a member of the um, general public. Uh, Rod Sear has, in his letters in the packet, has expressed an interest in joining uh, the board of directors as that citizen representative, and I would make that motion for that appointment. Here a second. I'll second that motion. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, yeah, you go. Yeah, so um, the two positions were, were, were given to the select board. One would be the select board member, and one could be uh, select board or town resident. It was supposed to have been someone who is not uh, part of the fire department. Okay, And Rod, Rod Sear has history there, um, and I'm not talking speaking against this. But I'm just being very upfront with you that he is a, a life member of the fire department, has not been involved probably for the last 11 plus years. So, you know, he has some distance there. But I just, like I said, I'm just bringing, being very upfront. Um, so I've, I've talk, stopped and I talked with him. Um, I think he would be a good, great asset to the, the board. We haven't had someone from the community since Jerry DMT's. And that's been quite a while. He is now currently uh, the chair of CD5. So, uh, 
you know, I'm, I'm in favor of this, but again, it's up to the board um, if you want to, to waive that. Okay, any other comments on this? All those in favor of appointing Rob Sear to the Berlin, I mean, to the Berlin Fire Department uh, Board of Directors? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. I'll abstain. Motion carries. Thank Rod, will you see him? I will. Uh, approval of licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. I make the motion to approve payroll warrant 24 04 for payroll from July 27th to August 12th of this year, paid on August 16th, 2023, in the amount of $60,858.50. Payable warrant 24 G04 with checks 23250 to 23290 for payables in the amount of $386,329.10 and the general journal entries for July of this year. I second. Any discussion on this? Question for Diane. So I think at our last meeting you gave us uh, basically a, a list of expenditures mm -hmm. from the flood. Is that what I was seeing some of in here? Yes. Or, okay. Yes, and I actually updated the list so if you want. This is the latest, which includes what's in there. And granted, a lot of the payables that are in there that you just approved were flood related. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure that that mm -hmm. list is the same. Yeah. Any other comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, approval of minutes for August 7th. I make the motion to approve the minutes of August 7th, 2023. Second. Any comments? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. The approval of minutes for August 14th. I make the motion to approve the special select board meeting minutes of Monday, August 14th, as presented to us this evening. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Well, any motion carries? I was not there, so I don't understand. Okay. Uh, round table fall? Nothing this evening. Thank you, though. Joe? Uh, I'm good, thank you. Tour? Uh, just a few things. Um, Economic Development Committee will be meeting tomorrow to go over a tax stabilization application for um, expansion of the Comfort Inn uh, Hotel. Um, if that gets approved, then you'll be seeing it at uh, a future select board meeting. Um, I have included in your packet a draft for advertisement for Town Treasurer as Diane. Um, I'll keep my editorial comments to myself, is seeking to retire at the end of October. Um, looking at the personnel policy, I think it is prudent to um, do an open advertisement for this position um, and, and proceed that way. Um, so I've included the draft, uh, you know, I'd like to get this out as soon as possible. And another issue that we don't have to talk about tonight, but just thinking about is um, Tim was asking about the possibility of getting a on-call highway worker for the winter. Um, we do potentially have one worker going out for um, surgery for several weeks um, in the November. Yeah, I think it's um, six to eight weeks is my understanding. They'll be out. Um, Starting in September. 
So that will get us into potentially plowing season. Um, and then it just also gives us flexibility if somebody gets sick or gets injured during the season. Uh, you know, we, we've always we've got Craig, but uh, you know, he's got his own duties he needs to be doing uh, as far as the water and sewer systems. So uh, I think it'd be nice to have somebody else, uh, you know, another backup on board. Uh, potentially, you know, look into the future of maybe, uh, you know, permanent FTE, uh, joint duties between water, roads, and other maintenance around here. But at least for the winter, uh, having somebody on call for Tim that can use it. You know, Tim Davis Sr. Uh, did the last couple uh, winters, but he's moved out of the area and is no longer available. So just looking for like a backup from there. One recommendation I have to the advertisement that we would list for the town treasurer is maybe we should specify the combination of education that we would seek. Because it says candidates must have a combination of education and job experience to fulfill the min minimum requirements of the job. But we might want to specify that um, to make it very exacting. Okay. That's the only suggestion that I have on that. I did have one other thing. I wondered about an update on the things that have been left at the end of the roads. Have you heard any more on like Muzzy Road and things that people have left near the road but not close enough to be picked up by say the state and we don't have dumpsters yet. Have you heard any more on what we can do or should do or is there any updates to that? Um. My understanding, the contractor has been through the whole, well, except for making one last pass on Cedar Drive, which should be tomorrow or Wednesday. Uh, the contractor is done with their work in the town as far as picking everything up. Because so. there's quite a bit still at the base of Muzzy Road. Okay. It's been spread out, per se, almost like maybe sort of like what Dan was saying tonight. Maybe someone's come through and pulled some out, but there's still a lot. It's just been spread out, per se. And there's some other things as you get closer to Riverton on the left-hand side. There's mm. quite an amount there as well. Okay. And there may be others, but those are two that I've noticed. Mm -hmm. Anything else for you? Yeah. I'm oh, sorry. We got to go back around. <laughs> uh, just to go off what Flo was talking about, I was contacted. I think you might have had a voicemail as well from an individual about uh, uh, coming up and do, helping with demolition of mobile homes. I don't know if you happen to reach out to him or... I've not talked to him yet, but I don't know who you're talking about. Um, some issues <laughs> potentially run into, a lot of these are the older mobile homes that are left and getting into asbestos issues, so it's not just somebody that can come in and anybody that can come in and sure. tear these things apart. The other thing is, you know, what do you do when they're deconstructed, they still have to be removed off. So we're waiting details from the governor's program, um, which I don't think he's funding, um, putting enough funding into that program to uh, you know, take care of Berlin and all the other towns impacted as well. So mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. I don't think they're severely underfunded. And I guess one last thing, we, we still have, the fire department has a number of fans, dehumidifiers, that are available to anyone who's still going through whatever moisture or, uh, yeah, basement issues. So, do we have a place to store these once this is all over? Good question. I've had people ask me that, and right now we're storing them until we're until we can find a place to store them after. What quantity do you have at the current time? I believe there's currently, mm -hmm. we're somewhere around 14 fans and one dehumidifier that still can go out. Mm -hmm. How many are out now? How many are out now? Roughly about 13 fans and four dehumidifiers. So you've got 20 fans and five dehumidifiers, roughly. I think we're out of 27 fans. I think that's what it is. 
in the Ultra Round Table. Executive session. I move that we enter into executive session regarding personnel in accordance with 1 VSA 313A3. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We're in executive yes. session. Okay, uh, next on the agenda is appointment of a full time police officer. I move that we appoint Marshal Collier as a full time police officer. Second. Any further discussion? All those, in, fa all those okay. in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, now set alternate date for select board meeting for Labor Day holiday. Our next uh, regular scheduled select board meeting is on uh, Monday, Labor Day holiday. I can't believe it's Labor Day already. Uh, so just wondering if you wanted to have it that Tuesday or just the following week or anything like that. I can do the Tuesday, but I'm flexible, so whatever right, majority right. can do. Tuesdays are bad night for you. Tuesdays right? are bad for me. And I'll tell you, the second Monday is not the best, but I can do that. What about Wednesdays? I can't do it Wednesday. Let's just do the second Monday. So or if we or Thursday that, that particular week. Uh, Thursday works for me. Why don't we do it that Thursday? It would be the first available. Oh. So if we do the second Monday, are we going to keep the following Monday as well? Yeah. So they're yes. going to be back to back. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's the uh, warrants that have to be processed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm good with that. I'm fine with the that too. Back to back yep. Mondays. Okay. Cool. Thank you. We'll call that one by agreement. Uh, motion to adjourn. I make the motion to adjourn tonight's regularly ske scheduled select board meeting. No second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All set. Good night, everybody. Good night, Thank everyone. You.